It's early morning in Taiwan's southern city of Kaohsiung. We're on our way with Wild Aid's Peter Knights to the city's port, where we've heard boats are unloading their catch. They're just unloading from the hull. As soon as we arrive, it's easy to see why this is considered one of the world's main hubs for shark fins. That whole truck is filled with fins. Thousands of fins are thrown from just this one ship that has spent months fishing in international waters. A forklift scoops up large piles of fins and dumps them into a truck. It quickly becomes clear they don't want us here. What is the problem? What's the problem? No, I don't like this. Is this your boat? Is this your boat? I don't like this. This is a public place. There's no reason why you shouldn't be able to film. I think there's nothing wrong in itself. It's just uh, they know that the, the sharks are being overexploited. They know that the shark fin is an issue, and they're very sensitive about it. Sensitive because this entire industry depends on consumer demand. All of these sharks have been killed. All of these fins cut solely to make soup. That's right, soup. We'll show you what so-called shark fin soup looks like in a second. But first, some background. None of what you're looking at is illegal. Taiwan has no law against fins taken from international waters coming into their ports. Only what it calls a, quote, plan of action. That plan basically requires the bodies of the sharks the fins came from to be accounted for and not dumped into the sea. Coming up right now. However, at this port, we see a lot more fins being unloaded than we do bodies. But Taiwan is not alone. Shark finning thrives off weak regulations around the world. And only a few countries demand that sharks arrive in port with fins attached. Knight says it all comes down to economics. The fin is one of the most expensive pound for pound items from the sea. And of course, the beauty about the fin is it's very compact. And that's why the finning goes on. You can sun dry the fins, you can bring them back. It doesn't take up your hold. And then you can make a lot of money from it. So then it's easy to understand why the battle over sharks is so intense. You don't want to be in it? Right, OK. And why so many people are in on the trade. Oh, here you go. Wow, come here and look wait, at wait, this. Wait, wait, wait. The low-tech processing plants for the fins are all around the port. Next to us is a whole bunch of fins. Okay. Yep. From the tops of buildings, you can see thousands of fins drying in the sun. Just separate the skin on both sides. We were invited into a processing plant to see what happens next. After drying, each one is soaked and stripped down so that just the cartilage remains. Even the fin itself, very little of the fin is used, just the cartilage inside. And it's... After a few minutes inside the plant, this manager got nervous and asked us to leave. We were initially allowed access, but now the owner seems to be having second thoughts. Shark fin soup has been around for centuries, but it used to be rare, a delicacy enjoyed by the wealthy for special occasions. Not anymore. China, in this case, is the 800-pound gorilla. We've seen the, the growth of the Chinese middle class in the last 15 years from probably 5 or 10 million to 250 million. And it's just been explosive, as we've all seen. And that's just had a, a tremendous impact on the, the demand for shark fin soup. It's now a mass market where shops sell fins by the bag full. And restaurant menus boast not only the $100 bowl of soup, but $10 bowls and all-you-can-eat shark fin soup buffets. So, Pete, it's a Thursday night. This restaurant's practically full. This is one of thousands of restaurants in the world that serve shark fin soup. How are you going to stop this? Well, I'm not sure we're going to stop it altogether. We just need to reduce it to sustainable levels. That's the goal. Knight says their efforts are having an impact, but he knows the odds are stacked against the shark. And time is quickly running out.
The message is getting out there, slowly but surely, but it's a huge, huge challenge. The tradition will end. The question is, will it end before there's, uh, well, there's any sharks left? Pete says the reason why sharks are so threatened is because they are feared and misunderstood. And some people think that the best way to understand sharks is to actually see them up close. But as Anderson found out when he went to swim with great white sharks, that's really touching off a battle of its own.